Hi, my name is Damien Webb. I'm the Manager of Indigenous Engagement here at the State Library of New South Wales and my family are Palawa from Tasmania. Atsalam Protocol 6, Secret, Sacred or Sensitive Material. So this protocol is probably one of the most well-known. Um, it's something that most library staff have an awareness of, if not a, a granular understanding. It's probably the one that terrifies most library staff um, in that it does relate to material that in some instances can never be seen or can only be seen by specific groups. Um, in many instances, we don't know who those groups are and libraries don't have strong enough relationships to, to really safely house those materials. So there's, there's been an ongoing journey to understand what Indigenous communities describe as secret and sacred, what qualifies as secret and sacred in different areas and at different times. Um, the definitions and meaning of that material has changed considerably and protocols um, such as the deceased image warnings and um, what used to be sorry business around never showing photographs of people who had died has now relaxed. So Aboriginal communities and protocols are changing and adapting to new technologies and, and changes in the way the world works. Um, and Secret Sacred is probably one of the, the more um, archaic, one of the more old school kind of protocols. So for a lot of Aboriginal communities, Secret and Sacred comes down to um, relating to initiation or relating to gendered cultural protocols. So there is certain knowledge that is only available to people at certain stages in their life um, or only available to certain genders based on cultural business and usually um, thousands of years of tradition. Where that got quite confusing is with the, I would say, overactive collecting of many of the early colonial agents that didn't necessarily understand or didn't care that there were protocols to such business. So we end up with photographs, with accounts that depict things that should not have been seen by anyone that isn't perhaps from that language group or from that community. And in some cases, not even everyone in that community can see that material. So it may be that only um, senior initiated men are supposed to see it. The issue that raises for libraries is, is how do we view that material? How do we digitize and describe that material if we don't know what's in there? And if we're not trained to at least be aware of some of the broader kind of implications of that material. So we know loosely that anything to do with burial, anything to do with mourning practices or initiation is probably secret sacred or at the very least sensitive, requires some sensitivity in how it's described and how it's accessed. So working with communities to define what is counted as secret and sacred locally, uh, coming up with ways that that material is managed. So those gender implications can extend even to collections management and handling. So um, there are cases in, particularly museums have been quite good at this, creating separate spaces to store men's and women's material or records. And that the staff, even if they're not Aboriginal or Torres Strait Islander, still adhere to somewhat to those gendered protocols. For me, I've always been told that as much as it's about protecting knowledge that other people shouldn't have. It's more about protecting people from getting sick. That seeing something you shouldn't see, seeing something that is not intended for you, particularly as an Aboriginal person, can have consequences for your health, for your emotional well-being, for your cultural well-being. The challenge of identifying secret sacred material in the collection is ongoing. So often it's more useful to have protocols for uh, things like takedown acknowledgements. Setting up broad protocols with Indigenous advisory boards or reference groups for what loosely qualifies as secret sacred and actually casting that wide net um, and then working with communities to ascertain. Um, the thing to be aware of is again that, that the gender divide, the age divide around some knowledge and what's appropriate will mean that it is not appropriate to have a single contact from a community to come in and check that material. Um, what you would be doing would be undermining the cultural safety by potentially inviting a young woman in to see older men's business. Permissions change, who you contact in communities changes. Uh, and that, that's something that makes libraries deeply uncomfortable because we want to be able to give people the right answer. We want to be able to say, this is who you need to ask, go and ask them, then we can facilitate access. Um, but what tends to happen is the stronger your relationship is with communities, the better that information will be.